Welcome to Creative Biolabs. The outbreak of the novel coronavirus disease COVID-19 has rapidly developed into a pandemic spreading globally. As of the end of July 2020, there have been more than 17 million confirmed cases and more than 600,000 confirmed deaths. To date, no therapy or vaccine has been approved for any coronaviruses that infect humans. However, this situation requires us to rapidly develop safe and effective prevention and treatment methods to prevent the pathogens from infecting more people. Here, Creative Biolabs will briefly introduce the vaccine development of SARS-CoV-2. We will discuss the following aspects. SARS-CoV-2 Introduction Vaccines Introduction SARS-CoV-2 Vaccine Pipeline Creative Biolabs Services First, let's get started with a brief introduction on SARS-CoV-2 infection. SARS-CoV-2 is a beta coronavirus, which spreads to oral cavity and respiratory mucosal cells through respiratory droplets to infect the host. After infection, it can cause respiratory tract and other related diseases. The life cycle of SARS-CoV-2 involves many proteins, such as spike protein, membrane protein, etc. The S protein of SARS-CoV-2 specifically binds to the host receptor angiotensin converting enzyme 2, also known as ACE2. This will trigger the conformational change of the S protein that mediate the fusion between the viral membrane and the cell membrane, and finally lead to the virus invasion to the human body. After the invasion, it fuses with the vesicle and releases RNA. RNA begins to translate and assemble proteins through the host organelles. Finally, the mature virus particles are released outside the cell through budding. For more SARS-CoV-2 related introduction, please check the SARS-CoV-2 introduction video in our channel. When SARS-CoV-2 invades the human body, the antigen-presenting cells will engulf the virus and break it down into smaller pieces. Then the smaller viral peptides are presented through MHC2. T helper cells recognize and bind to the presented viral peptides to be activated. T helper cells can further trigger other immune responses stimulate B cells to produce antibodies, which can prevent viruses from infecting cells and mark viruses for destruction. Activate T cells to become cytotoxic T cells, which further recognize and destroy virus infected cells. Some activated B and T cells are stored as memory cells. Memory cells can stay in the body for months, even years, to provide immunity. Generally, the vaccine development process is divided into three stages. Research and development, clinical testing, and transportation. The stages of the development process include platform choice, design one to five target, prep small batches, in vitro testing, targeting selection, target validation, the last stage is preclinical testing in cell culture and in animals. If encouraging results are shown in the preclinical stage, indicated by various parameters in the green box, the candidate vaccine is taken to the clinical testing stage, which consists of testing in human volunteers in three stages of clinical trials. If and only when the vaccine shows safety and effectiveness among human volunteers, Logistical actions such as manufacturing, supply chain distribution, storage, etc. will become a major obstacle. It's vital to ensure that vaccines are distributed globally in a coordinated and interconnected manner. Due to the various factors shown in the red box, candidate vaccines that have not obtained satisfactory results in clinical trials will be deleted from further development. The body's adaptive immune system can learn to recognize new invading pathogens. The existing SARS-CoV-2 vaccine research and development is carried out on the basis of strengthening immunity.
the purpose of all vaccines is to expose the human body to antigens that do not cause disease, but are able to stimulate an immune response. Then, if a person is infected, the immune response can stop or kill the virus. There are at least eight tests against coronaviruses, based on different viruses or parts of the virus. The existing vaccines are mainly divided into four categories: viral vaccines, viral vector vaccines, nucleic acid vaccines, and protein-based vaccines. Existing statistics show that the number of protein-based vaccines is the highest. In addition to the conventional four vaccines, there are other vaccines. Other efforts include testing whether existing vaccines against polio virus or tuberculosis could help to fight SARS-CoV-2 by eliciting a general immune response, rather than specific adaptive immunity, or whether certain immune cells could be genetically modified to target virus. Next, we'll introduce the four types of vaccines one by one. The first category is virus vaccines. Including attenuated vaccines and inactivated virus vaccines. Attenuated vaccine refers to a complete pathogen vaccine with weakened pathogenicity but still being vigorous. It is a vaccine prepared by culturing attenuated strain artificially weakened or naturally screened. Inactivated vaccine means to culture the virus and then inactivate it with heat or chemical agents. Inactivated vaccines can compose of whole viruses or fragments of them. The second category is viral vector vaccine. Viral vector vaccines graft antigen genes to non-pathogenic or weakened viral vectors and then enter the body to induce immune responses. This kind of vaccine includes replicating virus vector vaccines, such as weakened measles, and non-replicating virus vector vaccines. Such as adenovirus, the newly approved Ebola vaccine is an example of a viral vector vaccine that replicates in cells. Nucleic acid vaccines include DNA vaccines and RNA vaccines. Nucleic acid vaccine, also known as genetic vaccine, refers to a plasmid vector containing the encoded protein gene sequence. It is introduced into the host. By intramuscular injection or microprojectile bombardment, and the host cell expresses the antigen protein to induce an immune response to the antigen protein. Protein-based vaccines include protein subunit vaccines and virus-like particle or VLP vaccines. The protein subunit vaccine is made by extracting the special protein structure of bacteria and viruses through chemical decomposition or controlled proteolysis, and then screening immunologically active fragments. Most vaccine researchers on viral protein subunits have focused on the viral spike protein, or RBD. In order to perform well, these vaccines may require adjuvants and multiple doses. The virus-like particle vaccine is prepared from VLPs. VLPs are empty shell structures that do not contain viral nucleic acids. They retain the spatial conformation of natural virus particles, and the epitope that induces neutralizing antibodies. They have strong immunity and can not only stimulate humoral immunity but also stimulate cellular and mucosal immunity. The development and production of the SARS-CoV-2 vaccine is an urgent issue, but it may take several years to achieve success. Among the above-mentioned vaccine development technologies, some latest technologies may require more tests, while some mature technologies may need to be modified to adapt to SARS-CoV-2. Here are some advantages and disadvantages of each platform. The virus vaccine directly induces an immune response. Does not require adjuvant and purification of antigen proteins. However, the storage conditions are complicated, and effectiveness and risks are not balanced. Viral vector vaccines without adjuvants are safe and can cause a strong immune response. However, the existing immunity to the vector may weaken the effectiveness of the vaccine, and there are certain requirements for transportation and storage.
nucleic acid vaccines are of excellent stability, safety, and ease of development with affordable production costs. However, the side effects are still unknown. Protein-based vaccines with simple components can perform well in quality control. However, adjuvants are required. Multiple injections are also necessary, and the development cycle is relatively long. Information on the latest SARS-CoV-2 vaccine development is shown below. There are 199 vaccines still in development. 19 vaccines are in clinical trials. There is currently no approved vaccine. As shown in the note, different colors represent different vaccine types. Among them, protein subunits vaccines ranked first in research number, while RNA vaccines and inactivated virus vaccines rank higher in development speed. For more details, please click the link in the left corner. Creative Biolabs provides comprehensive SARS-CoV-2 vaccine development services, including but not limited to the following services. In silico vaccine design for SARS-CoV-2. Live attenuated and killed vaccine development services. Recombinant subunit vaccine development services. mRNA vaccine development services. Modified vaccinia virus vectored vaccine development services virus-like particle-based vaccine development services, formulation optimization platform for SARS-CoV-2 vaccine, analysis and qualification services for SARS-CoV-2 vaccine. In addition to vaccine-related services, Creative Biolabs also provides drug discovery services. Drug discovery services mainly include antiviral drug discovery, vaccine discovery, and preclinical research. In vitro diagnostic development mainly includes antibody and immunoassay development services, molecular diagnostic analysis development services, and detection kits. Creative Biolabs conducted extensive and in-depth research on the MERS epidemic in 2012, accumulating experience for SARS-CoV-2 vaccine development services. More information about Creative Biolabs can be reached by visiting 3w.creative-biolabs.com or by calling 1-631-466-5530 or by sending an email to info at creative-biolabs.com. Located at 45-1 Ramsey Road in Shirley, New York, Creative Biolabs is always ready to welcome you.